We're the directors of the Karim Kriya School. I'm Satya Kaur, the Chief Charan Singh. The Karim Kriya School is one of the main teacher training schools in the world, uh, training Kundalini Yoga teachers at levels one and two. So for this reason, a lot of people look up to us as to what we have to say, what is our opinion, what is our stance in relation to what's going on in the Kundalini Yoga world. And as many of you who are watching this are aware of, there's been some recent allegations as to what Yogi Bhajan did and how he conducted himself towards certain people when he was alive, talking about some 40, 30, 20 years ago. It's not the first time these allegations have been made. Mm -hmm. They've just, right. everything has come up to the surface again. Because uh, of the uh, publication of a, of a book, yeah. book of one of his yeah. early students, Prem Kakor. Right. Yeah. So we both had the good fortune of meeting Yogi Bhajan when he was alive and learning directly with him. As far as I'm concerned, none of these allegations or what's coming out and the reactions that masses of people are having doesn't change in any way the way I see Yogi Bhajan as a great teacher and master. And uh, my relationship with the teachings that he generously and profusely shared, which have impacted my life and impacted so many people's lives in the world. So to that I'm eternally grateful. Do you think that from the beginning, for myself and also for you, it was clear that the focus was on the teaching, on the practice, mm -hmm. and not necessarily on, on Yogi Bhajan. He's a master. He, was the, the postman, as I said, of the channel. Uh, and I can look over the years and see how people have very much idly, idealized or glorified Yogi Bhajan as representing, you know, their higher sense of self, the higher self, or their, you know, their, their aspiration of, of a, a great being, you know, mm -hmm. and, and projected that onto him. For me, that was never really necessary or never the case. And here, anyway, for myself, he pointed to the Guru Granth Sahib, really, as, as the Guru. And so that was always my primary reference, the, the technology. And he was always a great, uh, gave a little, so much insight to understand the teachings of the Guru and the ancient teachings of yoga that have come from thousands of years. And he gave his, his um, perspective on that. So the, the people are crying out about it's time to end the personality cult. Some people maybe have that issue. I think there's a, there's a difference between those people who are very close to him on a very regular basis in the United States and Canada and Mexico perhaps, mm -hmm. and those of us who are in Europe who, are, who um, have the opportunity to sit and learn with him maybe once or twice a year. So we were much more independent of what was going on in his daily life and we had our own way of relating to the teachings much more directly rather than via Yogi Bhajan as a teacher personality or filter. I recognize that for those people who have come forward, especially recently, such as Premka and others since her, uh, and who have uh, disclosed their experiences of uh, private time with Yogi Bhajan and they disclosed the hurt and um, the sense that of uh, exploitation that they were subject to, then I, I acknowledge this is a healing process and that's to be treated with respect and has to be um, honored the courage to come out and say things as they were and as they are. I acknowledge that as a, that's a good thing, that these things have come out, that there's no secrets, there's no taboos, there's no um, silencing of women's voices. I think this is very important. And, um, and if with it comes like a breakdown of an illusion, and if there's a shattering of projections that we were, you know, throwing to, onto Yogi Bhajan, that he was, he was beyond this, he was beyond that. If these kind of uh, illusions are broken, and if the raw reality comes through, I think this is a fantastic 
fantastic times, fantastic uh, opportunity to um, come closer to the reality, to see things more clearly and to grow up. And also to not put those projections onto any other exactly. uh, teacher, uh, male or female, you know, the, that teacher is just a teacher, messenger, and the, the teachings are beyond that. And mm -hmm. um, there are other questions that people are, are inquiring about, like the golden chain, for example, you know, is it still, <coughs> is it still valid, yeah? And certainly our understanding is that the golden chain is the golden, is chain, the golden, is chain, the golden chain. Is the golden chain. So that goes on, and anybody can tune into it. The mantras of Ard Guru Namay, the mantras of Om Namo Guru Dev Namo, Guru Guru Vai Guru Guru Amdas Guru. This gives us always a link to that lineage. And you may feel that link through your local teacher, you may have felt it through Yogi Bhajan, might continue to or not, but the golden chain continues to exist. The consciousness of Guru Ram Das prevails in this age that we live in, and anybody can tap into that. And uh, so the mantras are still completely valid, relevant, and the golden chain is a very real phenomenon if one chooses to connect with that and our commitment. This goes further. One might say, oh, I don't want to mention Yogi Bhajan in, in the classes. Of course, you can teach a whole Kalina Yoga class, just the Kriyas and the meditation, and never mention his name. But if you're asked, you know, you're not going to hide and lie and pretend otherwise. That is the source of the teachings as we have them. And also, um, not wanting to quote Yogi Bhajan, it's Kalina Yoga as taught by Yogi Bhajan. Now, we recognize that he may have, from a variety of different means, gathered together his own synthesis. But Kundalini Yoga is thousands of years old. There's lots of references to show that the concept of Kundalini has been uh, known in traditional cultures throughout the world also thousands of years. So clearly what Yoga Vajan has also done here by putting his name to it, he's, on, he's taking his own responsibility for the fact that he was told, don't teach it, you'll be dead in a year. But he taught it and he survived that. So he took all his risks put it together in the best way he felt was to serve the the, uh, the age, the change of the age we live in, and the Western society that was, as he spoke about, all these hippies going to India, coming back with suitcases of trinkets, but no real spirituality in, inside. The fact that he came to make teachers, not to collect students, make him stand out quite clearly amongst many other great yogis, swamis, gurus that came from India at that time. So. He chose a very remarkable path and took a lot of risks. A lot of risks. And, and in a way, he even crucified himself before all this current crucifixion that's going on by just stepping forward and saying, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make teachers. I'm not looking for students. And I'm going to teach at the risk of my own life. And this needs to get out there and it needs to get out there now. And one of his very early lectures describes why he chose to teach Kundalini Yoga and not Hatha Yoga. He's made many references, if you read the Library of Teachings, that he acknowledges some Kriyas, he put them together in his morning meditation that came to him, what he had to teach that day, and so on. So he put his name to it, and that was his crucifixion from the very beginning. So it is Kundalini Yoga as taught by Yogi Bhajan. If anybody wants to go and do others Kundalini Yoga, they can do it, put their name to it, put some other name to it, that's their choice. But there's this teaching that we have received and that we pass on, continues to be in that, uh, that, with that reference to it. If there's anything that should be concerned, if there's anyone rather, that should be concerned with these allegations, is really BBG, his beloved wife, who I greatly respect and love. Um, these disclosures might affect her and uh, be hurtful for her. Her life has already been very hard as it was, so I don't think it's so much everyone's concern what did happen, didn't happen. It's 16 years ago, for God's sake. What is there to change now? What matters is what you change about yourself and how you conduct yourself. That's what really matters. Uh, there will continue to be abuses. There will continue to be uh, desperate women who put themselves in very vulnerable positions will be taken advantage of, this will continue to happen. The New Age feminist movement is coming in hard, thank God, but it takes generations. So 
but each step forward, each step that we dare to be more ourselves is a great step. Very interesting. People say, uh, okay, so now we realize that Yogi Bhajan was just a man. But I think it might be interesting to separate <coughs> Har Bhajan Singh. He was the man. And when he took on Yogi Ji, Yogi Bhajan, actually that is where he's saying, I stand under to understand the teaching and to pass that teaching on. So Yogi Bhajan was the teacher, but there was a man there, and the man did what the man did. So I think these are little details like that, just a little way of thinking that turns everything around. And a lot of people are saying a lot of things on the internet, and it really shows not so much about actually what really happened, and it doesn't necessarily even show a healthy way forward. It's just showing that people have agendas, and they've been waiting for this kind of yeah. door to open, and suddenly they all want to throw up all kind of, of stuff. Whether it's trying to fight for defend his name, whether it's trying to to say, I knew it, I knew it, and therefore this and that and the next thing. It's it's all actually says more about the people who are speaking out than it necessarily says about actually what has happened. And, and when we're saying that, not with any uh, position ourselves to deny what has happened. We do know that um, an independent inquiry has been started, and of course we fully support that. And we're also very welcoming the statements that have been made by Akita, KRI, 3HO, and Sikh Dharma International, that uh, we are committed to uphold the Code of Ethics, to continue training teachers to the highest standard possible. And our challenge is to take it all forward, as Yogi Bhajan even said himself, be ten times greater. So that commitment is ongoing, and it's a very important commitment, exactly as Satya said, because shadows are within all of us, uh, naive students are everywhere, tendency of projection on people putting teachers on pedestals, all this kind of thing is, goes on and is not going to stop overnight just with these allegations. So continuing to push forward with the Code of Ethics to um, uphold that high standard as best we can and keep passing, <coughs> keep passing that on to, to others. Yeah. Please talk to your communities, talk to your national associations, any opportunity to join conversation, feel free to do so. Uh, we've been having a meeting with a lot of trainers and mentees uh, this weekend and we've gone through a lot of what we might call frequently asked questions that um, trainers or teachers might feel may be coming from their classes and we're putting that together and, and uh, we're discussing and sharing what is our honest and healthy response to some of these questions and we'll be sending that document out. It, it'll be a public document in the next few weeks. Satnam, thank you very much.